Hey guys, welcome back and happy Thanksgiving. In today's video, we're doing a couple of things. Number one, I wanna to talk to you about small fixed blade knives, neck knives, belt knives, that sort of thing. I wanna do sort of a top level discussion and a brief overview of some of these models, talking about how and when uh, neck knives or belt knives like this work really well for daily use and also when they don't work well at all. But in addition to that, at the end of this video, do stick around because we're also gonna introduce you to a giveaway that's happening this Thanksgiving day. If you want to get in on that, do stick around to the end of the video and uh, find out how to enter. But right now, let's talk about neck knives, belt knives, how they rock and how they suck. So before we start talking about how and when neck knives uh, work really well and don't work really well, let's give you kind of a top level overview on a handful of these knives here. I'll give you close ups on each one. Up here at the top, we've got the Essie Azula, one of my first neck knives in this size range. Fantastic, it's 1095 steel, uh, powder coated, I think it's a powder coat, and uh, wrapped in cord. Does not come wrapped in cord, but generally comes with a kit as well as a sheath, and uh, you can do the wrap job yourself. We've also got right here the Topps MSK Survival. I believe that's also 1095 steel with their version of a Scandi grind on it and a really nice coating as well. Micarta uh, handle scales on it, which are very well coated so they'll uh, be very durable. It's a, it's a really nice, really small, um, good ergonomic and uh, very handy little knife. Below that we've got the Bradford Guardian 3. This one in M390 with uh, the G10 scales on it. They've got a bunch of different versions of it. I think Micarta handle scale versions of it or at least I know they have G10 versions. They've got coated versions of it. In short, there are a lot of different versions of the Bradford Guardian 3 um, and it's a very ergonomic, very handy a little knife. Below that we've got the Rainier Knives Fast Pack. This is a brand new one. Uh, I just got a hold of this one. Uh, Rainier Knives sent me this one for testing and review. This is the naked version of it. So it comes with a little black Kydex sheath, which is extremely handy, works really well, goes on your belt, or you can hand it or hang it around your neck. Made of Elmac steel. Really, really nice. You're gonna be seeing a full review on that one shortly. Below that we have the Mora Eldris in stainless steel with their Scandi grind on it. Very small handle, comes with a really nice, really small little sheath. The whole package is pocketable, but you can also throw a cord through it, put it around your neck, carry it in a number of different ways. Um, it's again, really handy, really small, uh, and just adorable. <laughs> I don't know how else to say it. It's a really cute little knife. Below that, we have the White River uh, Backpacker. And this is a really, really nice looking knife too. Extremely aesthetic, um, great aesthetics on it, I should say. S30V steel with uh, some good jimping on the spine. Comes cord wrapped, but you can rewrap it or change that wrapping however you want it to be. Comes with a Kydex sheath as well. Overall, it's a fantastic little neck knife slash belt knife um, that'll get some good work done. Below that, we've got some cool looking knives from Steel Will. These are the Druid series, the Druid, Druid series of neck knives. There's also so the, uh, the large fixed blades that they offer. But this is the 281, 282, and 283. They are all in 9CR18 MOV steel, I believe. Uh, I didn't actually expect them to do as well as they did in some of the cutting that I did with them, but they, they do perform well. Also, my kids absolutely love this little bunch of knives right here. They wanna take them with them every single time we go camping. I usually don't mind letting them do that. Now in each case with all of these knives, I was attracted to them because I could see that they all struck a really good balance between mobility or ease of carry and also usability utility. They uh, are ergonomic enough that you can actually use them, but small enough that you can actually carry them in a concealed fashion and have them there when you need them. And generally speaking, I'm not interested in a neck knife or a belt knife if I don't feel like I can conceal it well and carry it around well. Also, if I feel like I could never use it because it's just way too small, I generally won't buy it because, again, what am I gonna use it for?
So let's kind of start this discussion off and talk about when and where neck knives work and when they don't work. Uh, to begin that, we got to admit that folding knives generally work better for most applications. Today I've got the Microtech UTX85, not a folding knife, but pockets the same way any folding knife would. Far more expected in society, we'll definitely agree with that. Um, but the neck knife or belt knife has a lot more utility in some situations. Let's get into that a little bit. So some of the advantages of the small fixed blade knife is obviously the fact that it's a fixed blade. So it's tougher than virtually any folder. That's really kind of not something that you can argue with. It's just, it's, it's one piece of metal <laughs> wrapped in a handle. It's gonna be tougher than practically any uh, mechanical knife. In addition to that, uh, they are one-handed. So whether it's from the belt or from a position on the neck, it's one hand. You grab it, pull it out, it's ready to use. In addition to that, um, Considering specifically the, the neck knife position, putting one of these around my neck, it's very convenient. It's front and center. It's right here, right at my chest, okay? Very accessible. Let's talk about when a neck knife could be a problem. Some folks will say that it could be a choke hazard because you've got this chain or paracord length around your neck. I don't think, I don't worry too much about the choke hazard thing, particularly considering that a lot of neck knives you buy will come with some kind of a breakaway cord. So under stress, it will break rather than end up choking you. But some folks will say that it's a choke hazard. We gotta acknowledge that. Uh, in addition to that, if you keep it outside of your shirt and you're walking around, I don't know, with a grocery store, they generally will see this whole part of you first and anything that's there, they might you know, be alarmed by if it's something that seems out of the norm. Whereas if you've got it down in your pocket, they generally don't notice it, or if they do, it's a little bit more of a practical place for it, a more socially acceptable place for it. Uh, so it could be a downside from that perspective if you're not concerned about social norms and what people think about what you're wearing and what you're doing, okay. But a lot of folks will be concerned about that and we gotta acknowledge that too. Next, again, speaking specifically towards neck knives, it's kind of position indeterminate meaning it can swing around left to right, up and down. Uh, in the case of something that's on your belt, you don't really have to deal with that. A belt knife is definitely more of a, an advantage in that sense. Uh, the Bradford Guardian 3 comes with a really nice belt sheath. Uh, so that's in a very fixed position and reaching down and getting that out you know, it's always gonna be where it is. Same thing with a folding knife. It is where it is. Generally, it doesn't fall out. Additionally, we have to acknowledge that a smaller knife has limited utility, it just does. It's not a great survival knife, it's not gonna get um, a ton of hard work done, it just can't. You know, you don't have the ergonomics for it, you don't have the reach for it, you don't have the size to do a lot of that kind of stuff. So, if you're relying solely on something like this, well, it's got really limited utility, so we gotta acknowledge that fact. So let's talk about some specific situations in which it does make sense to carry a neck knife and when it really doesn't make sense to carry one. So one of the things that I'm thinking of is in regards to the outdoors, hiking, backpacking, stuff like that. I actually think it makes a lot of sense to have some small fixed blade right here because you've got your pack on generally. If you have another survival knife, it may be within your pack or strapped to some portion of your pack. You could strap something like this onto the strap of your pack that would definitely be useful. Um, you could have your, obviously your pocket knife in, in your pocket, or you could have a knife on your belt itself. However, that becomes an issue when, you know, big backpacking packs that are meant to carry a lot of weight generally have some kind of a belt that comes around your waist meant to uh, take the majority of that weight off of your shoulders. When you have that, it's really difficult to carry anything else on your waist. So in the pack or on the outside of the pack makes more sense. And in that case, a fixed blade, a small fixed blade like one of these makes a lot of sense. Again, either strapped to the pack or around your neck where you've got quick access to it. Sticking with the theme of activity, I think in minimal dress situations, for instance, going to the beach or going to the park on a hot day, um, I think having something like this, either under a t-shirt or just outside the tank top or whatever it is you're wearing, if you're shirtless, having something like that on, if it works with whatever you're doing, that makes a lot of sense too. I would also say that situations where you're gonna be sitting for long periods of time, it makes far more sense to have something around your neck easy access right here than on your belt anywhere. Because for instance, if you're driving and you maybe you drive for a living, having something on your belt underneath the seatbelt, which is underneath your shirt, 
is going to be difficult to access, but something right here, front and center, really easy to get to, makes a lot more sense. That goes for motorcycling. That goes for, let's say you're into bushcraft. I think having it right here makes a lot more sense too, because you're either kneeling or you're sitting. And so having your knife right here again, front and center, makes a ton of sense. Now let's talk about situations where neck knives don't make a lot of sense at all, uh, particularly if worn on the outside. I feel like if you're in some kind of a professional situation, maybe either representing your company or maybe representing yourself but in a professional manner, um, putting something like that around your neck sort of shouting to the world that you're into bushcraft and knives and survival doesn't make a lot of sense. You kind of want to conceal things like that. You want to make yourself as relatable as possible. That's just good business. So. In those situations, I would not encourage the wearing of a neck knife, and I definitely wouldn't do it myself. Additionally, you know, we talked about backpacking before, but there are some other sort of high activity activities that I don't think a neck knife would work well in. For instance, jogging, you know, running, cycling, stuff like that. While I think motorcycling, it, they actually work real well because they're right there, front and center, easy for you to get access to rather than reaching down to some folded part of your body. But when you're cycling, again, so much back and forth, the thing is swinging, it's getting in the way, it may interfere with uh, whatever it is you're doing, and so it could be a problem. A lot of people say that it could be great for self-defense, and there are a lot of good neck knives that are built for sort of self-defense last-ditch use. We had a story in Utah very recently where a woman was jogging in a park, guy accosted her, and she was able to slice that guy up good because she had a knife on her. Now, I have no idea if she was carrying that in a neck knife configuration or in some other fashion, but because she had something and carried it in a way that worked for her and had a plan as far as using it, she was able to defend her life and get that attacker pretty messed up. So yeah, however you choose to carry, if you work out a situation in which it works for you and you can manage it and you can deploy it, by all means, wear it, use it. So we've talked a lot about how these would or wouldn't be incorporated around the neck primarily up to this point, but there are plenty of other body positions. For instance, I talked about before, on the belt. You can have that on the belt. Uh, horizontal, in my opinion, is the best way to carry it. You can have that horizontally on the belt. That's a great way to incorporate any one of these knives. I've done it before for long periods of time. Really enjoy carrying a small fixed blade knife in that way. I'll continue to do it in the future. In addition to that, um, you could also have it, um, some folks would say put it in the boot. It's kind of an, an old west way of doing it and uh, you kind of get some old west ideas in your head when you're looking at that but certainly it's a viable thing to do for a lot of folks that do have to wear boots for what they do day to day. Having a small knife like this fixed into your boot could make a lot of sense. You can also carry some of these things inside the waistband. It takes a little bit of rigging to make that work but I've done it before certainly doable. That's not all though. You can also put any of these into sort of an off-body carry situation. Your bag with maybe a concealed compartment in it could house one of these knives so that it's there at the ready either in a purse or in any kind of a, a bag that you carry day to day. This could be there in that spot ready for you at a moment's notice. So there's no looking for it on your body. There's no, again, position indeterminate around your neck. It's in the bag. You get access to it. You're ready to pull it out if you need it or you know, whether it's self-defense or not, you've just got a great, strong fixed blade utility knife there at the ready. Um, so that's definitely a good way to carry. Now, small fixed blades may not be for every user or every situation, but there's some utility there that's undeniable, some concealability there that's very handy, and also some really great aesthetic to a whole lot of them. So I would certainly recommend, if you haven't already done so, to pick up some small fixed blades for wearing around your neck, wearing around your belt, incorporating in whatever way you choose to. But again, the utilities there, I definitely recommend them. All right, guys, let's get into the giveaway. So the main thing I want you to know is that almost everybody is eligible. It doesn't matter what age you are. Kind of matters what country you live in, but I'll get into that in a second. The main thing I want you to know is this is a Thanksgiving thank you to all of you guys that support my channel, that watch my videos, that click on my affiliate links, etc. This is my thanks to all of you. The prize, a $100 gift card to Blade HQ. And that's kind of where the country you live in might matter because they can ship to a lot of countries, but not every country. 
go to their website, look at their uh, shipping page, and see where they can ship to before you decide to enter. So again, $100 gift card, you can buy whatever you want, that's why age doesn't, doesn't matter, and that's why your country doesn't matter so much. But uh, how do you enter? Let's get into that. On Thanksgiving Day, what I'm gonna do is post four brand new videos, another knife blitz, if you will, this time reviewing some of the knives that you saw in this video. And what I want you to do is go ahead and watch all those videos, comment on all those videos, be a subscriber, of course, but comment on all those videos. And then what, uh, what I'll do is randomly choose from one of those videos and randomly choose a comment and that will be the winner. I'm not going to make a second video announcing the winner, I'm just gonna contact you and then I'm gonna send you that $100 gift card, um, basically an e-gift card to Blade HQ. Uh, once again, guys, I wanna thank you all so much for watching over the years and for all the continued support. I'm Late Boy Scout. We'll see you later.